Welcome to the Dental Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kira Dent, and I had this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create A teams. Welcome to the Dental A Team Podcast. Hey, Dental A Team listeners, this is Kira, and you guys, I am beyond giddy about the fact that we are having a way for you guys to kick off your 2023 in the most epic way. That's right. I want you guys to go into 2023 with direction, with a plan, and to actually get something done, done, and done. If you've been looking at that operations manual, it is time, guys. For three months, every single week, I'm going to be doing a workshop with you and your team in January to get that operations manual done in three months. Guys, this is a value of over $10,000 that I know you're gonna freaking love because you're actually going to get it done. So if you wanna get your ops manual done in three months and kick off your January ultra strong, head on over to thedentallyteam.com backslash ops manual and I will see you January 5th for our kickoff. Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira, and you guys, I am super excited because this is a podcast I recorded with Jordan Comstock, CEO of Boom Cloud. And I thought it was actually a really, really awesome podcast about how to make sure that your practice is fee for service worthy. So, guys, take a listen. And as always, thanks for listening. And I'll catch you next time on the Dental A Team podcast. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Navigating Dental Insurance podcast. I am your host today, Jordan Comstock. With me, I got a friend, longtime friend, haven't ta- spoken with her in a long time, Kira Dent from the Dental A Team. What is up, Kira? Jordan, well, I love that you like set this up, that it's going to be exciting. So like you already preset the stage, like I better come with a lot of excitement, energy. Come with energy. <laughs> no, I'm just so good. And it's so good to see you. It, it has been way too long. Likewise. So I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're podcasting today. Yeah, it's going to be a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be exciting. Please, please correct that. Exciting, fun. Like, what are you trying to do? Add all these expectations? Exciting, fun, energetic. Yeah, like, step it up. <laughs> here we go. All right, I'm ready. Here we go. <laughs> You're ready. Here we go. So today, I'm excited. We, we chatted a little bit before we started recording. And uh, today, we're going to be talking about, you know, is your practice worthy to become fee-for-service? I think it's an appropriate topic. Uh, the amount of uh, practices I speak to on a daily and just when when I'm out, out at events, so many people are, are wanting to drop PPOs and become more fee for service. So I think this topic is definitely timely, especially because you got we got what inflation pushing on these practices, insurance companies continue doing their BS out there, um, you know, and I think it does require a certain type of mindset shift to become fee-for-service, and I think it's a a fair question to ask yourself, is my practice worthy to become fee-for-service? So with that said, Kira, what what are some of the mindsets or the culture shifts that you see in a practice that's that's moving fee-for-service? And maybe maybe why why should a practice move fee-for-service? Let's start with those. Yeah, for sure. I think it's, uh, and I, I'm so jazzed we're talking about this because I agree with you. Like seeing hundreds of practices in the dental team, like we fly to these practices and you just hear everyone's ticked off with inflation. They're ticked off with insurance. Totally. And my brother-in-law, I, I'm not allowed to say the company he works for, nor his name. Um, <laughs> And I was like, we should get on a podcast. And he's like, here, I can't do that. And I was like, why not? Because you know it sucks. Um, <laughs> is he work for an insurance company? He does work for a dental insurance company. And uh, the thing is, like, bottom line is, dental insurance is not these insurance companies' biggest driver. And so they're not trying to sure. increase our maximums. They're not trying to ensure that their fees are congruent with today's current market prices. Yeah, they, they just, just don't care. It's like yeah. a second a second thought for them. Because medical is what drives them. And that's what they're going to make their money on. And so sure. knowing that... I don't blame these dentists for getting ticked off. I don't blame them for being frustrated, but I feel be cautious as practices not to get hasty in the moment of I'm ticked off. I'm sick of these insurance companies. I'm going to drop them because I want to get paid more, which I yeah. don't blame you. And I always do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm all for that. Like doctors, my husband went to uh, 
a pharmacy school. I taught at a dental college. Like, guys, I am your biggest advocate for you being paid what you're worth. I'm just going to say sequence matters on this. And let's make sure you have the right practice, the right team, the right verbiage, the right culture, because when yeah. people become fee for service, so when you decide to drop an insurance plan, you have to realize the reason they were coming to you before, like initially was because you were in network. Then they yeah. built a bond with you. They built a relationship, but the number one thing that probably sent them to you for most of those patients was the insurance. You cut that away. Now this person's no longer tethered to you. Let's make sure that you actually are providing the practice and the dentistry that this person who's now untethered to you will want to continue to come to you for. Otherwise, they're just sure. going to up and go find someone else on their insurance plan. Just down the street. I mean, I'm I'm here in Utah, and it seems like <laughs> every practice is signed up with every PPO under the sun, right? Mm -hmm. It gets crazy. So they can just pick up and go down the street. So yeah, I think you're absolutely right. So culture, like I'm big on culture, even, even with my company. That's a very important thing for me because I've seen what bad culture does to entire company. What like what are your tips on on the type of culture to look for while going fee for service. So I think culture has got to be something where like, let's just think about it. I mean, there is a different mindset. If I'm going to Walmart, which Walmart's slogan is like best, what is it? Like cheapest savings or something like that. Like they're literally targeting something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly we don't know. Um, but you just think about yeah. what is the marketing message for Walmart? Who's coming? Like they are looking for people who are looking for deals. That is their target audience. They want the people who want sure. the discounts. Then you migrate to Nordstrom or to Gucci or to Prada. Like, guys, guess what? Louis Vuitton does not run spe specials. They would, yeah. like, you would never see a Louis Vuitton of like 50% off. Like, you would vomit if you saw that come through as marketing because their clientele would never want something 50% off. That's not what they're looking for. So yeah. I think fee for service is more Louis Vuitton, guys, and PPO is more Walmart. And so mm. your team, and not saying PPO is Walmart, guys, I'm not trying to be a jerk here. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm going to Walmart because I'm getting discounts. Guys, I, Jason, my husband, he hates shopping anywhere else. He's like, let's go to Walmart, save money. And I'm like, let's buy organic. <laughs> like, I know they don't. <laughs> Whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. Sure, uh, but yeah. Jason's like, save me money. Let's do this. And that's where he's going to go. But I just think, like, think about your practice. So when I was PPO, well, guys, a lot of our verbiage was around insurance. I'm looking at maxes. I'm doing insurance verification. I'm really ensuring I know their information. When I go fee for service, guys, what do they care about? They care about the experience. They care about how they're treated. Yeah. They care that their bill is correct. You don't have insurance to fall back on anymore, guys. Like that's, yeah. you don't have this caveat to fall into. So I feel like culture wise is we are more focused on patient experience, not mm. saying in PPO that you're not. I'm just saying you got to heighten this sucker up because at that up, point, yeah. these patients become free agents. They are radical. They can go anywhere. You've got to find something that's going to keep them tethered to you. And what I will say the, the things that deter patients, number one, scheduling. If it's a nightmare, if it's hard, if it's hard for them to get scheduled, they're going to go somewhere else that's going to be easier. So online yeah, scheduling. So convenience. Like, totally. You've got to be <laughs> up in the know right now. Otherwise, you're going to be left behind. So it's really got to be something where you, you've got top-notch online scheduling. And if you don't want to do it, consider elsewhere unless you're trying to attract an elderly patient base that's fine they're not going to be online scheduling they're going to be postcards and calling you and all of that but have a nice concierge for it then another thing that i'm noticing is how is the the experience overall how's the dentistry guys like they're going to leave if you're giving hard injections if your bites are off like because there's a hundred different dentists that they could go to while they still have insurance so make sure that there's painless dentistry and then the other like top-notch things that I'm seeing are how are they treated when they come in? If your front desk person's on the phone when they're coming in and all the forms are funky and the bills are wrong, that is going to deter people more than anything. And I have a, a personal example is we have never been with dental insurance, me and my husband ever until this year. And nice. the rep said, Hey, guess what? Like your dentist is in network. And so my husband's like, do we do it? And I was like, Oh, MetLife, dang. Um, but if our <laughs> dentist is in network, whatever, we'll try it. We've been membership plan fanatics over here. Uh, sure enough, we go to the dentist. I'm on a membership plan. <laughs> uh, but really. So the story goes, we go to the dentist. My husband gets a bill because don't worry, MetLife is claiming that our dentist is in network because five years ago, there were two dentists who used to work there that no longer work there that were in network. So therefore, the rep said that they were in network. It's total sure. BS. I was livid. I call them and I'm like, what the heck? I'm not paying 250 bucks for an in-network 
plan, like profi, this is ridiculous, yeah. switch me to a membership plan. So I had them send back the money to MetLife. I switched over to a membership plan. But guys, that bill and that billing and all that junk, like we have been fee for service patients at this dentist for the last four years. Nice. That chapped my husband so much, he left. So my husband, we now go to two separate dentists because <laughs> my husband got so bugged with it. So the point of this is sure. Jason, my husband is on insurance. His insurance is junk guys. And it did not do well, but because the billing was wrong, because the scheduling was hard, because the team oh, interesting. at the yeah. fever service practice didn't uphold their end of the bargain. It frustrated my husband so much for me. I'm terrified about going to different dentists. So I'm going to stick with their membership <laughs> plan. But sure. to the lay person who doesn't care about that as much, the bill is what ticked my husband off to where he went to somebody else who's in network, even if they're not as great of a dentist. But because my husband has insurance, he went there. So I'd say it's the scheduling, the convenience, how you're treating them, and then your type of dentistry are going to be three of the big things to look for in that culture and the experience that patients will be looking for when they become fee for service. Yeah, that's awesome. See, no, I'm the type of patient here that actually signs up for a dental membership plan, but then I don't go. So you're that guy. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, guys, he's so a statistic. I, 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 yeah, I like pay for the membership plan because we we obviously use one of our clients at Boom Cloud just down the street here. And all of our employees get, you know, have a membership plan, but I bought it maybe a year ago and I still haven't gone. I'm like, oh man, I'm that, I'm that patient that Jordan. pays them money and, and <laughs> I, I clean okay. my own teeth. It's okay. <laughs> dentistry, I mean, I was talking to someone, they're like, what do you do? And I was like, I work with dentists. I'm like the number one hated profession in America. Like, I get it. <laughs> dentists are hated. Dentistry is hated. So I don't blame you. And I think more people are like you. And so it's really also like giving patients peace of mind. Like, let's think of what are those patients concerned? Like, I'm going to ask Jordan, why don't you go to the dentist? That like got real why personal. Yeah. Why haven't you been? You um, no, no, you can ask me. I'm very, yeah, I pay for it. Absolutely. I think for me, I'm super busy mm -hmm. and I got, so I'm busy at Boom Cloud, running Boom Cloud with, with my team and we travel a lot. And then um, I get home and I've got uh, three little girls that keep me even busier. Mm -hmm. Right. So for me, it's just, uh, um, for me, it's just lack of convenience. Like if I, if they, if they had a mobile dentistry shop and they came to my house, <laughs> I would do that. Yeah, I would also that's, say, for me, it's just, they probably in fact, think that's, that's what I do with all my cars. Uh, all amen. my cars, I pay, I, yeah, I pay a membership for all my maintenance for my cars and they, they come, they, they're mobile. They come to my house. So I think it's just my, uh, my lifestyle right now. I'm just going, going, going. I so busy. two things on it. <laughs> One, your dental office ha probably hasn't like made it easy for you. They should have scheduled you and just said like, you're coming on on this day. Cause then that takes the stress out of sure. it. You're like, okay, I'm coming. That probably would have gotten yeah. you in. That's number one. The second thing is, is if anybody listening wants to create a billionaire side hustle, guys become the <laughs> dental office, <laughs> right? Okay. Jordan, this is going to be, yeah, this is going to be our go. billionaire side hustle is <laughs> high end on entrepreneurs are busy and they will literally yes. pay for you to come fly to like come to their house do their dentistry for them in a mobile van and then you go to the next yep. one like get some bougie mercedes van have it like cruise around i i truly do believe that mercedes. you could be <laughs> get them i think i you would might totally need a do more. that P i if would too to me or my office and you know i would totally do that over like the traditional way there you go. Um, it's a billionaire side hustle. Just because I'm busy and I'm a billionaire. There's actually a, a, a practice here called Jet Dental that's actually just down the street from our <laughs> office. And they're a, they're a mobile dentistry uh, shop that they go into corporate. I'll have to have our HR team look at maybe See? bringing them in. Because that's what I would do dentistry because I like... I'm always traveling and then I get home and I'm yep. juggling three girls. Totally get it. <laughs> and, a, and a puppy now. We got a new puppy. Oh my so. gosh, Jordan. Well, I'm also going to ask, insane. does your dental practice text you so you could just schedule on your phone? Uh, no. So I was going to actually make a comment on that when you said the convenience of scheduling, because I am going out of network, right? I I think what a year ago, I had to go to the dermatologist to go get something looked at. And um, the, uh, the, I was in network with an office, but I would call them and they would never answer or they, mm -hmm. they miss phone calls or I was just phone tag back and forth. It was driving me crazy. And then I found uh, an office just up the street here. They're out of network for on my plan, but on their website, they made it easy for me to schedule. I, I ended up choosing them because like I said, I'm busy and I'm like, man, I don't have time to be playing phone tag with an office to try to get, try to try to give them money. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so I went to the, I, I, for me, everything's convenience, right? That's what, that's what I 
like with my with my own personal like customer experiences um at stores and whatever right i like re- convenience um because it my life is just complicated with young girls mm-hmm, and a mm-hmm. growing company right so um but they i got on their website and easily booked and i i got in i think that same day or or later that day some, something like that maybe it was the next day but they made it really easy for me to get in really quick and, and get out right and I think that's what you're absolutely right in dentistry, making it easy to book an appointment is most of like, I, I care about my teeth, right? I've, I've been on the clinical side of the dentistry, but my issue is not that I don't care about my teeth. My issue is that I, and I need more convenience for me to even, even go, right? It's just totally. too complicated. But I think like Jordan, the reason yeah. I asked that is because I wanted to hear guys, Jordan is a real, a real patient. And I'm a real patient. He yeah. cares about his teeth, but because I it's do. not convenient. So I'm like, okay, if you're going to be a fee for service practice, Jordan will literally, like he said, he went somewhere else and paid more money to someone else because it was more convenient for him to get yeah, it. Totally. That is the type of stuff you have to think of when you want to go out of network is what are these people going to keep coming to me for? I'm going to be more expensive yeah. than a competitor with insurance, but do I text them? Hey, you're overdue for your cleaning. Click here and get scheduled. I can't wait to see you. Are you guys sick of trying to figure it out on your own? I know I am. When I'm trying to run a business, sometimes I just think like there's got to be a better way to do this. And so for me, my answer has been to find someone who's done it and does it really, really, really well. Like I'm talking the best of the best of the best. I want someone who's been in my shoes, somebody who understands what I'm going through. When I was looking for the consulting business, I found a coach who literally has run a consulting business. Well, that seems like the perfect fit. So you guys, right now, we have a few spaces open in our Platinum Consulting. That is in the consulting where we actually come to your practice. We help you get systems implemented. We don't just tell you what systems to implement. We actually implement them with you and for you. You guys, it is one of the best investments I've ever made is to hire a coach who understands the business I'm in, who's lived it, who's done it. And that's what we in the Dental team do. We literally physically fly to you. So if you're sick of trying to figure it out on your own, if you just want somebody who understands you, join our Platinum. I'd love to have you. I'd love to have our consulting team come out and see you, be in your office, be with your team, and truly help you get onto the easy path of dentistry. It doesn't have to be hard. So join us in the Platinum. We'd love to have you. Honest to goodness, guys, I would bet. I would put a solid... I'm going to put a hundred bucks. I I know Jordan pretty well. I would bet if I texted him and said, Hey Jordan, we haven't seen you in a little while. Here's a link. Get scheduled. I can't wait to see you. And then I followed up in two days and two more days and just said, Hey, I I would most likely take action. He would do it because guess what? (laughs) He's going to be looking at his text messages in the middle of the night while he's like, Oh shoot, I forgot to do that. Click on it, schedule it. And I'd be like, Oh, I actually could do it tomorrow at four o'clock. There's a spot I'm going to schedule. That yeah, is I would totally time. do something like that. If, if they made it easy for me, that's that's really the issue for me. It's not easy. <laughs> yep. But like, that's the whole point. This is why it's, it's such a brilliant one because today, like Jordan, do you use Instacart or some food delivery? That oh yeah, Instacart. 100%. Every, everything we do, I, we use uh, DoorDash and Instacart um, on a daily basis. Same. <laughs> I was literally... Because- Go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's because I'm so convenient. I would tell my wife, I'm, I'm so convenience oriented. Like, I want it to be convenient. I like, I don't want um, to get home from the office and then go to the grocery store. Right. I'd rather just order everything on the app and then it's there on my, on my, on my porch, right. Yep. Ready to be taken in. Right. So I save a lot of time doing that. Um, you know, the same thing with, uh, well, just lots of little services like that. We, we have, uh, people come in and like clean our house, straighten mm-hmm. up our house. Um, the door, DoorDash and Instacart definitely are, are I think, if I were to look at my bank statement, I'm like, man. I and Amazon, right? Yeah. And Instacart, Amazon, yeah. DoorDash, yeah. and Amazon. But you look at that, yep. and that's what I'm trying to point All out. convenience. Yep. All convenience. They looked at it. You guys, grocery shopping is a freaking pain to go to yep. the store and do it. And when you're yep. looking to see what are these people going to, it doesn't matter if you're trying to attract entrepreneurs or you're trying to attract the totally but i'm like but guess what people work eight to five they have jobs so if you're making it hard for people to schedule to pay their bills to get in to see you i mean my husband guess what remember let's go back and loop he went to the office that was in network guess what guess who sat there for an hour and a half for a new patient exam didn't get his teeth cleaned had to get leave because he's like guys i've got to get back to work sat there for an hour and a half and then had to go back the next week for it and i was like there's no way i would ever go back to that practice 
even if they're saving me money, because at that point in time, I've lost two days of work for a cleaning yep. that should have just taken one day. So those wow. are the types of things. So fee for service, if you're going to have these membership plans, which that's ultimately why I love membership plans and love being on the podcast yeah. is because you no longer have insurance that's tethering these patients. You figured out a great patient experience throw that membership plan in place. So now these patients are tethered to you. They do want to keep coming yeah. back to you and it's convenient. But I will say guys, if you're going to be fee for service, go out of network, don't have two appointments for cleanings. People don't want to come back. I don't care if you're busy and slammed, you're trying to drop these patients, but guess what? As a fee for service paying patient where I'm paying top dollar, I expect top dollar results. I want to come in. I want to be seen by the same totally. hygienist, same dentist. I want to have consistent care. I want to be able to have ease for scheduling my fillings because if not, I'm going to go to the person who takes insurance because it's easier and it's cheaper. Yeah. Make your life super yeah, simple and fee for service. That's really interesting because I've obviously seen a lot of different practices here in Utah knowing I know a lot of the, the practice here because I used to manage a dental lab. So I know a lot of the dentists in town. And I've noticed that most of them that I've gone to have made it really complicated for me. Now, they're all most of them are all in network, except for one that I, I, I'm, I'm aware of. But it, it seems like all of them have made it really complicated for me to to schedule an appointment mm -hmm. and even want to go right or even even reminding me because we all forget right we get busy yep. like you said with the text message reminders i think that is super critical and if a practice isn't doing that and thinking that they should go fee for service i'm gonna have my mom listen to this episode because <laughs> she's taking her pod her, her her office that she works for they're becoming to be uh, uh i was i would drop by yesterday to visit her and she's like yeah we're we're, we're dropping four more plans i'm like yeah yeah after this podcast, after listening to you, Kira, I'm going to send this to her. Like, <laughs> follow what Kira says because uh, you don't text me. You <laughs> should totally. a pediatric office, so but my daughters go there, right? Right. So I'm like, you don't text me to schedule, and it may, you make it really hard. So like, it's mm -hmm. time to level up, mother. <laughs> well, I think in in general dentistry, it's interesting. I just hired a marketer who's joining our team. I'm super jazzed for him to start. And I asked him because he's coming from SAS and tech, and I was like, oh, why cool. are you coming to dental? Like. The, I feel like a complete like left turn like what happened you're headed on one direction and he said Kira I was at the dental office actually I've got family members who are dentists and he said I noticed like this software looks like it's from a long time ago he said dentistry feels very outdated in a lot of ways yeah. and I feel like dentistry is a good space to be able to come in level up and help people like basically just sure. re revitalize and I feel like that's somebody, again, guys, who's not in the dental world. This guy is literally coming from tech. He's like website yeah. dev, all of that, coming into dental because he sees it as a zone to come into. So I feel like There's as a lot practices, of opportunity, yeah. For sure. And I just feel like offices, be, be a forerunner on this. If you want to go fee for service, I am rooting for you. I'm rooting for you to go on the membership plan. That's why I'm on the podcast because I'm a firm believer. Like I will, I will promote membership plans every single day of my life. Like I clearly even went in network and just Me went too. right out of it. Like <laughs> clearly Jordan. Uh, but the reality is you have to realize that people will pay different fees for fee for service. Your clientele, your patient base is going to be very different. PPO versus sure. fee for service. So figure out that avatar, figure out what they want and listen to those pain points. I, I don't know about you, Jordan. I read up on like real cool companies like Amazon, Apple. Like I just want to know what the founders think. And yeah, totally. Jeff Bezos said something super interesting with Amazon. He like when they were trying to launch Amazon, he mm -hmm. noticed it was too clicky. Like there were too many buttons for them to be able to purchase things. And you had to walk them through too many times that he was like, go back. And the developers hated him. He was like, go back <laughs> and make it to where it's a one button click. And if yeah, you yeah. notice, you I can love literally that buy it, like go to an option. Cause I was so bugged where you just bought a house and I have a ton of junk for like horse watching out the faucets and all these things. Cause I didn't want to pay the upgraded fees when my husband's a custom home designer um, and nice. builder. So I was like, that's fine. We'll just order it all. I've got a basket full of faucet sinks, towels, all this, and I just need to buy this book. <laughs> and there's the buy now button. So instead of me having to go through my whole cart of 50 items, there's a buy now button. They listen to what customers want. They think outside the box yeah, and they've made cool. it simple. And so I feel like that's really how you can determine is your and practice convenient, first right? Just yes. one click. And, and, and a lot of the times now, Kira, that are coming in, like I ordered stuff. Uh, what, two days ago and like literally the next morning it was on my porch i was yeah. like whoa convenient and then they wow you right mm -hmm. and that's <laughs> what it right. is that's what it is so if you are wanting to go fee for service i'm all pro if you're sick of paying for the the insurance and getting the reimbursements and just feeling like it's junk and there's so much time yeah. 
fantastic. I am 100% pro memberships. I will literally sing it from the rooftops, but I'm going to caution you before you do it. Make sure your practice is fee-for-service worthy. Make sure your patient experience, your culture, the convenience, you're looking, you're, you're seeing it because guess what, guys? As soon as you cut that umbilical cord of insurance, patients become free radicals. And if they don't love you, if they're not tethered to you and there's not a reason that they should keep coming to you, they will, like you'll keep some, but there's a lot that you're going to lose over time sure. just because they're going to go somewhere else because they'll think that that insurance is going to give them the best experience. Yeah. What I, I would imagine as you're going out, you know, becoming more fee for service that you want to uh, prioritize some marketing strategies out there. I would imagine, you know, Absolutely. to continue, continue bringing patients in and, and keeping that pipeline full. Cause no matter what type of business you're in, whether it's a dental office, a software company, a, a dental lab, a consulting firm, you're going to have some type of attrition, right? Whether you're in network or out of network, there's always some type of attrition. So I think marketing helps kind of solve that, but more so when, when you become fee for service, right? You want to, you want to, I would imagine you want to prioritize a marketing funnel. <laughs> uh, if you, you don't, know? you just cut the lifeblood because you have to realize insurance is a marketing yeah. funnel. Yes. You don't yeah. like paying that 30, 40% off, but guess what? That 30, 40% off that you're paying of, of your contracted rate, that is your marketing budget, whether you choose to see it that way or not. Totally. So absolutely. You're now getting paid full fee, but that doesn't mean you get to keep full fee. You've got to now have yep money to go in and market new patients that want to come to you for that experience well, and the things and the, that differentiate. The cool thing about that is, is, is back to control. And maybe I'm a control freak, but I like controlling my costs and my, my efficiencies. Right. So when you bring marketing back in house versus like labeling the, the insurance company as a, a marketing component, you bring it marketing in house, right. You're, you're able to control it more and optimize it and make it more efficient uh, whereas, you know, I would say, let's call it PPO marketing is not that efficient and it's not very direct, like directly, um, you know, focused on your practices, kind of a network of practices. Right. Totally. So I think that's why, that's why I would like, I would prefer uh, becoming a fee for service practice because you, number one, you have revenue control and then, or pricing control, however, you, however you like to look at it. And then marketing management or marketing control. So you can control all those, comp all those necessary components of your business and optimize them to make them better spe mm -hmm. specifically for your practice. So that's kind of how I look at it. <laughs> totally. Well, and right. I think it's just a matter of, do you want to go out and hustle and find some marketing companies that can help you and you yeah. get on social media, or do you want to pay the cost of just having insurance companies come and either way you're going to pay a cost. It just depends sure. on what side you want to go. I am all about being paid for what I'm worth and being able to attract the patients Likewise. I want to have. And so of course, and I also just feel like I hate insurance being capped and having waiting periods, deductibles, missing tooth clauses. Oh, there's second. a lot of red tape. Oh they throw a lot of red tape. Gosh. And you're, you're dealing with small businesses that aren't accustomed to bureaucratic red tape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, right? let it's them like, get uh, their crown. Like we're not, we're not trying, I'm not trying to do a build up insurance company because I want more money from you. Literally, this is what needs to happen. And so for me, I just think that the the annoyance of insurance is worthwhile because changing my culture, having a better patient experience to me is a, a piece that I would prefer to do because I know it's just going to ultimately be better for my patients, better for yeah, my it's team. It's like an upgrade, yeah. So mm -hmm. let's do that instead. Sweet. No, I love it. I think this is awesome and much needed in our industry today with, with all the inflation and the, like I said at the beginning, the BS from the insurance companies seems right. to be. It seems to be getting worse over time, at least as long as I've been in this role in dentistry, it seems like it's just getting more complicated, <laughs> you know? And it will continue. They're not it trying to continue. make it easy. Because guess what? The insurance companies don't want to pay out money. So they're in a they business well, as that's well. Their, <laughs> that's their business model, right? Is to collect as much money as they can and pay out as little as possible. <laughs> why do you want to be literally their business Why model. do you want to be tethered and in bed with that person when yeah. their business model is not to serve you? It just feels very silly to me. Well, yeah, if you think about it, and I say this all the time, insurance companies attack three things, right? They attack your the, the practice's cash flow, they attack the practice's profit margins, and then they they attack the the patient experience mm -hmm. in a in a practice, right? Because often if they if a, a patient has some type of uh issue with an insurance, you know, the 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 patient thinks it's the practice's fault or something, right? So it really messes with those three things. And if I had a business partner or employee do that here, I would fire them, right? I'd get rid of them. <laughs> that's what I, that's how I look at it because I, it just doesn't make sense to me that our industry has allowed this to go on for so long 
because of those three things that insurance company, you know, hurts totally. or attacks. Right. So that's, that's kind of all, always been my mindset. Um, and really any industry that deals with insurance is dealing with these same problems, right? That it kind of makes me scratch my head. Like, why do you keep partnering with bad partners? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because people make don't, sense. they don't want to have the quote unquote pain of creating an awesome culture. That's a great patient experience, which even if you're yeah, PPO, you should do. That does, that, that does take a lot of work to create a good culture. But at the same time, shouldn't you be doing so that important. anyway? And then you should secondly, be doing that anyway, yeah. If you're a great company, like you think about all the companies that you just love. Like I think of restaurants, of stores, of products yeah. that I just naturally recommend because I love them so much sure. that if I'm that kind of, if it's that kind of experience, then your patients are naturally going to refer and you're, yes, you do need to do marketing. But to me, I just feel like it is, why not? And why not give your patients a better experience? Because yeah, then totally. you get to play the game. You get to do whatever you want to do. You get to write the rules. And there's a thousand. I just feel it gives you more freedom and control and creativity. But if that's not your jam and jive, rock on. Stay in the insurance world. But I would strongly <laughs> recommend at least trying it. And if nothing else, even if you want to stay in the insurance world, which, again, I'd say get membership plans regardless because people are going to stop coming to you very soon yeah. with recessions. So have, have that fall proof in place for you. But, uh, I just feel like enhance that culture right now, even if you're not choosing to be fee for service, because getting a consistent referral base of patients, no matter if you're PPO or fee for service is going to maintain that flow and give you confidence to be able totally. to sleep at night, to be happier and to be more successful. Yeah. I like sleeping well at night. Me too. <laughs> Instacart and sleep. That's all I need. Uh, <laughs> Instacart and sleep. Perfect. <laughs> oh, I love this. This has been a, an awesome episode. Great tips from, from you. Cause you, I mean, you see your boots on the ground, in a lot of offices, I would imagine. So you, you get to see probably a lot more than what I see. Uh, Cause I just go visit, you know, a, a couple of my friends that are in office and then my, my mom down the street. <laughs> <laughs> hey mom. I'm but, here. Yeah. Yeah. Mom, I hope you listen to this episode. This is dedicated to you. <laughs> That's right. Mama. And the fact that I can have a podcast, he's going to make his mom listen to, it, I feel pretty great about that. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. It's good. <laughs> so Kira, uh, if, if someone's, you know, looking, they love this episode, they love your tips. Um, what, what do you have to offer to help practices to become fever service and, and how can a practice contact you and, and learn more about what you offer? Yeah. So, uh, I love dentistry. My last name really is dent. Um, and I'm obsessed <laughs> with it. I'm just obsessed with helping offices have happier lives. And, um, as a result, they become more successful as well. So help more patients, help their teams and, uh, just be, have life easier. So if that resonates with you, I think the best zone is our podcast. So we have a, a podcast called the dental a team, tons and tons of tips just like this. And then if you're interested, you want one-on-one -on -one customized in your practice. If you're like me, where I can hear tips all day long, I just need someone to hold my hand. And, and make sure I actually implement all these great ideas. That's what nice. we do. We do private one-on-one -on -one coaching, either in person in practices or virtually. So you can email us if that's something that jives with you at hello at the dental, at the dental a -team .com. One day I'll just get dental a team, but as of today, we're cool. Like the Facebook, the home Depot, whatever it's fine. So hello <laughs> at the dental a -team .com, or just head on over to our podcast, the dental a team podcast and uh, tons of tips just like this, but super appreciate it, Jordan. It's been real fun. And uh, I just, I just appreciate everything you guys are doing for the world of dentistry. Well, likewise, thanks so much for coming to our show and rock on everybody. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Aid Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time.